I was looking at some of the promotional art from the new Final Fantasy game. I was just really amazed by the art style and the brushwork in these paintings. So I looked a little bit into it and found out that the character designer that did some of these paintings is Kazuya Takahashi, who has also worked on some of the artwork from Final Fantasy XIV. So today I wanted to look at some of his paintings, try to analyze the art, understand how he paints, and then try to replicate one of the paintings from Final Fantasy XVI. So the style is very unique. The way he paints has this rough feel to it, but yet a very detailed look at the same time. So it was really fun and interesting artist to study because when I was looking at the paintings and trying to analyze it, I can almost see every brush stroke that he took. It has this painterly rough feel for it, but yet it has lots of detail. Some parts almost feel that they're not rendered at all because of this brush stroke feel when you look at it zoomed in and in detail. But then when you look at the painting as a whole, it looks very appealing and interesting and it really works and really is actually detailed. So sometimes looking at these brush strokes, you might feel like they're just random, but they're all on purpose, like the different color variations and some of the things that they put and the way they put the brush strokes, it's very intentional. So some things, for example, that are not important and are out of focus, are really simplified with simpler brush strokes and then things that he wanted to have more in focus are more detailed with the brush strokes and have more stuff. So then what I wanted to do is try and study this specific painting in detail to try and understand it and study it more so that maybe I can study and learn some of the techniques and some of the brush stroke techniques that they do. So the first thing that I noticed that this painting here there are a lot of pure blacks in the character's clothing. So using pure black is something that usually is a no for me and I don't really do that, but they use it very well here. So when I was thinking about this one, I wanted to try a different approach this time to my usual process. So what I decided to do is create a new layer for the character and just have everything as pure black. So just the silhouette as pure black and then slowly, slowly start adding light into the painting. So this, this style, I noticed that it has a lot of rough edges, a lot of texture. So when I wanted to pick a brush for this, I didn't want to just pick the hard round brush. I'm sure you can do that, but what I decided to do is just pick a textured brush and start and do everything with that. So I decided to go with Lewis's oil pastel brush. And if you want that brush, you can just go to her page and, and, and find those brushes. And you can see me here trying to add the red and the orange light into the painting. So the key was that I kept changing the hue and the saturation a bit when I was adding the light. And of course, I was playing with the value quite a bit to make sure that I get that transition between the really harsh light to areas that don't have much light at all. So because everything was in black, the way I was thinking about it is just where is the light hitting? So, and where is the light hitting and how much of the light is actually being reflected on that piece? So that way, when I was adding the color and thinking about the values, I would just play with that and add the light there. So this was a very interesting way of thinking about things because my usual approach is to just have a mid-tone and then start thinking about light and shadow. So I start adding darker colors and then lighter colors to, to, to add the light and shadow. But in this case, I just had to think about light and how much of it is there. So in addition to the uh, red and orange light, there was also a secondary blue light uh, in the back side of the, the character or on the left side of the character. And you can see that that is reflected in some areas. And I try to add that and really just continuing blending in. And then when it, come, when it came to the details of the clothing, so because I had the silhouette done, it was really easy to just go in and just think about shapes and just adding light in the way it would reflect on, on the shapes. For me, I always liked the round brush because I could blend easily and really think about that by just color picking and blending. So for example, for the face here, um, I, I wanted to continue using the same textured brush, but then it didn't really turn out very well for me. And maybe because I'm not used to using the textured brush, I have to use the smudge tool afterwards to do some, some of the blending there. 
but in the clothing itself that textured brush really worked very well for me and it gave that same feel that the original painting has so i really liked adding that to the clothes and and the shoes and stuff to, to add the texture even for the hair to give that style but when it came to the skin itself i struggled a little bit with it and i had really to use a smudge tool or a blending tool to blend so using this brush is interesting because if you're zoomed in and you really think about the techniques that they use using the same brush, just adding brush strokes, visible brush strokes and not blending too much. When you're zoomed in, it may look a little bit odd and those brush strokes might stand out quite a bit. But as soon as you zoom out, you see that it really works together and those brush strokes actually add and enhance the painting. And one of the things is that color variation. So a lot of times, as I mentioned before, it wasn't just, for example, the red that I use. It was a combination of different hues close to the red. So the red, the orange, and some yellows. And then we came to the black part where I wanted to add some shadow and some light to, for example, the shoes. There was the blue and also reflections from the red also included in that. So always thinking about color variation and adding the light into it. So then I did the same thing with uh, the other character. So similar idea, I started with, with pure black and then started adding the light into different areas. One of the things that was uh, very interesting and fun to do was the sword because the sword is very reflective. So the, the amount of color that was in the sword was a lot more than, than anywhere else. So you can see the red was quite a bit and the blue was quite a bit. And then also because it's reflective, a lot of areas where there's a sudden change between light and dark, you know, a lot of um, really bright highlight added into the piece. Then once I had the two characters done, I wanted to also do a little bit of the background. So I tried to use the same brush. So using the same brush, again, same idea, start thinking about light and shadow here because everything was very light, the background. So I didn't want to just put a completely black um, background and start adding light because that doesn't make sense here. So I started with the background and think about color variation again. So blue and red was used quite a bit again here so i tried to add that color variation there and start blending using that same texture brush again when you zoom in things might not look very detailed and things might look look very rough in the texture of the background but then when you zoom out everything looks good together and part of that is because the background is not the focal point so you can really simplify things by adding just bigger brush strokes and you don't have to add details of course in some areas you add some details and and go with a smaller smaller brush stroke and that alone the combination of a little bit of detail and also bigger brush strokes provides that uh, that good good look to it so i think studying this art style has really helped me to let go a bit and experiment because this was the first time i get out of that really rendered look and try and have a little bit more texture and and rough look to a painting and having the brush strokes visible in some areas really emphasizes the style and the painter and the painterly feeling of the work so i hope you find this video helpful as you can see i'm experimenting with more styles but if you're curious about how you can actively work on your style and how to find your style fast you can click on this video here